really the the foundation that I found for anyone to be able to make any kind of change in their life is that well-being. And yeah. if that is not there, then you know, that's the first place to look. Welcome to the Relational Parenting Podcast. I'm Jennifer Hayes, a parent coach and 20-year child care veteran. Each week, I sit down with my own father, Rick Hayes, and discuss the complicated issues that parents face today, as well as some of the oldest questions in the book. From the latest research and the framework of my relational parenting method, we offer thought-provoking solutions to your deepest parenting struggles. Added bonuses include intergenerational wounding discussions and guest childcare experts. We will also start taking your parenting questions in episode five. So be sure to comment with your biggest questions or email me directly at jenny at jennyb.co. Let's get started. Caitlin Morris is a certified life coach, functional health coach, and mom of three. She knows women are the change makers in our world, and she's passionate about supporting them to feel their best so they can make their impact. She's the creator of Radiance, a group coaching program for nurturers, where she supports her clients in reclaiming their radiance through feminine power, wellness, and community. When she's not geeking out over gut health, crystals, or female empowerment, you can find her cuddling with her family, watching a movie, and eating pizza in Golden, Colorado. Welcome back, <laughs> everybody, to the Relational Parenting Podcast. Um, this week, my friend Caitlin Morris is with us. She lives here in Colorado, and um, I also met her through one of the business groups that we're both a part of. Um, and yeah. we won't, my dad won't be here today. Just want to give everybody a heads up. He, there were really big storms in Illinois last night. And so his power is out, his cell towers are down and his Wi-Fi is gone. Um, and yeah, so he's fine. They're, they're fine, but he is unable to join us today. So it'll just be Caitlin and I welcome Caitlin. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really yeah. excited. Yeah, me too. So Caitlin, you are a wellness coach for moms and entrepreneurs. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, I just recently have come into the term nurturers because I feel like mm. there's a lot of really beautiful parallels between motherhood and entrepreneurship and just the way that we take care of others, you know, in our life yeah. and ourselves. Um, yeah. So yes. Yeah. I love that. So you, so tell me, just tell me all about how you came to be a coach in this space, um, in whatever way yeah. that you want to tell, tell us your story. <laughs> how did you get here? Yeah. How did I get here? I'll try to keep it as a TLDR, but that, uh, we'll see what <laughs> I can do. Um, many lifetimes ago, I actually went to school for film and I produced commercials. I busted my butt in a post house and um, worked my way up the ladder pretty quickly and burned out uh, at the ripe old age of 28. And then in my next lifetime, kind of at the end of that burnout, I had found um, group fitness and, and teaching. And the, the studio that I found it was the first time in place that I had been in such a warm welcoming environment where people were accepted, you know, for who they were and what they looked like. And it wasn't about like the pounds that you had to lose or anything like that. Yeah. It was what you could gain, you know, the strength and the power, the, the resilience from putting yourself in uncomfortable situations. Right. So yeah. I, started working for that company, actually like working my way up the ladder there, started working part-time for them and then started working for their corporate headquarters and, um, and working and supporting the franchises. Um, and so through all of that, um, I, I, you know, went on my own health journey trying to feel my best and went down lots of different rabbit holes. Um, I, I found, coaching. I found, um, this guy in the functional health space that I really dig, uh, Chris Cresser and started following him and digesting all of his information and really just loved his kind of like even killed, um, approach to 
anything, you know, that's like, don't eat this, eat that. <laughs> and yeah. he would make sure to do the the studies and the research of like, okay, here's, here's the, the information. Anyways, um, really started getting into the functional health world, um, through the work that I was doing with the group fitness, um, company that I was working with fell kind of into mentoring and leadership and coaching it, you know, I didn't call it that I was, um, teaching other instructors how to be instructors. And then I started working, mm. teaching trainers how to train instructors. Um, and so it really has just felt in reflection, like this really beautiful, like coming together of all of my passions over the last few years. Um, I got laid off in August of 2020, June, actually. Um, I, a memory just popped up on my phone um, because oh. of the pandemic. And that was like my you know, my jumping off point, it was like, well, I've been thinking about, you know, starting a business for a really long time. I had also through the fitness work, gotten my um, personal training certification. And so I launched my business as a personal trainer and then started looking at Chris Cresser's health coaching program that he had announced. And then a friend said, um, Hey, I think you'd be a really good life and leadership coach. And so through all of that, I actually ended up enrolling in both programs at the same time, which I don't necessarily recommend, um, but I had a lot of support. And that was kind of me professionally. But at the same time, I've also had three babies in the last six years and a miscarriage. Mm. And, um, mm. you know, just through all of that, I've also lost um, my father in law and my brother. And it's just been this incredible journey of learning to support myself and what growing my business in a sustainable way looks like. And, you know, really, I guess, again, just like this beautiful combination for me of becoming a mother, stepping into these roles and really just kind of following my passions that I have come here. And I love working with women and nurturers um, who know how to take care of everyone in their life because they're really good at it. And it also means that they come maybe last. Um, I've experienced that in lots of different ways. So, um, that's, I don't know, tried to keep it long story short, but, um, those are the pieces that just came to me. That's, that's how I got here. Yeah. Yeah. And you, when you and I talked before this, you, um, you had mentioned kind of getting your start in wellness with functional health. Yes. Um, functional health practitioners, which for my understanding, um, is the way that that's different than traditional Western medicine is that, uh, functional health doctors look at the root cause mm -hmm. of things. So, so in Western medicine, it's what's the symptom, here's a pill, yep. um, or a lifestyle change. It's getting better or a lifestyle yep. change that will help that symptom, um, but functional medicine has always focused on what is the root cause of these symptom, of this symptom mm -hmm. or these symptoms, um, and what do we need to change usually dietarily or exercise or um, a lot of it is diet <laughs> um, or <laughs> supplementally um, in order for these symptoms to subside, in order for you to, to get your health back. Is that yeah. accurate? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's it's a really holistic view of the whole person. Mm -hmm. And listen, I'm not here to bash Western medicine because if, you know, I or a family member, God forbid, has a heart attack, like I want to make sure that there's, you know, a really yeah. great doctor who's there to take care of them. Right. So by no yes. means am I bashing Western medicine. However, oh, it's, it's a very important piece of the puzzle. Yeah, it absolutely is. It all works yeah. together. Um, yeah. Functional medicine they do a really incredible job of, like you said, looking at the root, looking at the whole person, right? If there is gut issues that someone is experiencing, it could be, um, you know, because they're eating foods that are really inflammatory to them. It could mm -hmm. also be because of the stress that they have in their life that actually does create inflammation in the body. And so, you know, it's not just looking at that one piece that's, that's wrong quote, you know, the stomach, you have problems with your stomach and only treating that piece. It's like, let's look at the entire person there in, you know, every day, what happens to them from the time that they wake up to the time that they go to bed, how are they nourishing themselves, but how are they taking care of themselves? You know, all of those pieces. And then 
you know, once you have that, um, being able to create a, a plan that is supportive and sustainable for that person to then go on and make change in their life. Yeah. And I feel like from our conversations that that maybe is how you approach your coaching as well, minus maybe the medicine part, right? Cause you're not a doctor, but exactly. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. It's for me. So some people in conversation look at me and they're like, you're a functional health coach and you're a life coach. Like how do those things actually go together? Um, but really the, the foundation that I found for anyone to be able to make any kind of change in their life is that well-being. And yeah. if that is not there, then, you know, that's the first place to look. And I think there's a lot of, I don't know, misconception is not quite the word that I'm looking for right now, but this idea in our culture that it's, you know, just a mindset shift or you just have to work out harder or longer. Right. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of people that can absolutely be true. But again, if we're mm -hmm. not looking at the whole person and what's going on in their life, maybe the mindset piece is not actually it, you know, maybe it's something else <laughs> and yeah. everybody knows that we should work out and sleep eight hours a day, right? Like it's not the knowing piece, it's understanding and accepting who you are and yeah. what works for you, what you like, what you don't like that I think for me is the, the really fun piece of what I get to do, like helping somebody tap into their intuition and listen to what feels good for them, because there's a lot of messages outside of that, you know? Um, and so it's really fun to help people like lean into their intuition, to trust their own gut and mm. be like, wait a second, actually like this is what's helping me feel really good and really alive right now, um, as opposed to something else. So it's, it's absolutely the foundation for me that I really, I really enjoy. I love, I love that. And I love that, especially for women because mm -hmm. there's a lot of, and I don't know why, maybe I haven't dug deep enough on the internet, but a lot of the functional health practitioners that I know of that are like big names, well-known, um, and that I like follow on Instagram and, and whatnot, they, it's men. And, mm. and their advice, a lot of it is very male oriented. Um, there's a, in my experience, there's a lack of, and it's getting better. It's yes. getting so much better, but Slowly there's a lack of understanding in the physiological differences between men and women's needs. And you know, things like women operate on a 28 day cycle ish, um, women. So women's energetic needs, um, are different every, di yes. every week of the month. Our, uh, hormones are different every week of the month. Our sleep needs are different. Our need for play is different. Mm -hmm. Like our energy, even, even though everyone has masculine and feminine energy living inside of them, no matter what your biological sex is, um, the, the feminine requires different things than the masculine and physiologically speaking, that's also true. And so sometimes a lot of times in my experience with men, it is that they need to go work out harder or they need to get an extra, they need to have an extra push to, you know, get that energy out, um, that anxiety, that whatever, um, they do, do need to go cold plunge, but you know, me as a woman in, in the luteal phase of my cycle, a yes. cold plunge is the devil. Yes. <laughs> Even though it might help me with muscle recovery, it will inhibit me in other ways because I have a lack of hormones right now where I'm at. So I, I maybe the proteins, you know, what is it? The cold plunge forces your muscles to quickly produce more proteins to warm you back up which speeds up the recovery of your muscles, but my endocrine system is going to crash because I don't have the yes. hormones to take over and warm my body back up. Um, so anyway, all of that, I don't want to get into, I went way too far into the physiology of it, but I, what I wanted to get to um, is, 
you looking at the whole person and starting with their well-being instead of looking at um especially when it comes to like parenting and if you're focused on mothers, you know, what can I do differently with my child? What can I do differently with my husband or my partner? What can I do differently in my work? It's like, first of all, we need to stop and we need to tune into you. Yes. We need to dive into your intuition and trusting yourself and heal all of the garbage laying on top of that. Yes, absolutely. And a lot of it is just like you said, I mean, honestly, I, again, not to throw knives, it's a, it's a part of the capitalistic and patriarchal kind of culture that is just like the water that we're swimming in. Right. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, there's a lot of white male people in, you know, Mm -hmm. those positions of power. And a lot of the studies that have been done are on white males Mm -hmm. and, surprise, (laughs) you know, most of the world is not a white male. And as another example, I was just reading a study this week about intermittent fasting and Mm -hmm. intermittent fasting has been, you know, all the rage to help Mm -hmm. lose weight and have all these benefits. And actually, just like you're saying, for certain women, depending on their hormones, where they're at in their life, um, you know, their lifestyle, their stress, like all of that kind of thing, intermittent fasting actually could be one of the worst things that they could choose Mm -hmm. to do to themselves but there's just not a lot of research out there yet. So you're yeah. totally right. It's, it's shifting and it's happening. And, and I love that. And I'm excited about all of that. Um, and there's still, you know, kind of these ideals around what we should look like and what we should do. And when mm-hmm. we do give ourselves that opportunity to, to pause, to, you know, take a scan of our body and how we're feeling and what's going on. Um, it really opens up a, a world of opportunity. And one of the things I love about coaching is that we were taught and, you know, I, I believe the person sitting across from me or in a room with me or in a Zoom meeting with me is whole and creative and resourceful on their own. You know, mm-hmm. we already know what we want and what we need. And it's yeah. actually just trying to ignore the rest of the noise to, yeah. to celebrate who we are and what we bring, you know, as an individual into the world and what will help nourish us as, as a person, you know, the ideals definitely work to a point. Um, and then we get to, to tweak based on what supports you, not what's wrong with you. Yes. I see a lot of huge. like overlap, you know, between that, um, you know, with, with kids and how we want to support our kids and, and bring them up and the same pieces of that, that same kind of love and acceptance we can give to ourselves as well. Yeah. Yes. That's, I've about three times in the conversation so far, I'm like, and that's how we should be raising our children. And that's yeah. how we should be raising our children is yeah. to, cause you said, you said we need to look at what supports you need like what is it your what needs are of yours are not getting met not what mm-hmm. in you needs fixed that's right. not what coaching is about that's not what therapy is about that's not what like yes there might be like trauma things to dig into and uncover and work through but it's mm-hmm. not about we're in this like we have this like fix it culture um yeah. that we all fall pre- fall prey to in the interest mm-hmm. of being the best we can be and living a happy contented life yeah. um and I, I fall into that trap still constantly all the time, every day. I have to like coach myself out of it, um, or call a friend or talk to my therapist, you know? Um, but you, in the same, uh, way that we need to figure out what our needs are, what works for us and how we need to be supported as human beings. That's what we need to be doing for our kids. Each of your children is a different person and has different needs, emotional, mental, physical, like cognitive, like different needs Mm -hmm. from you as a parent and as a mother, especially in those first five years. Um, And so if you're not in tune with yourself and you're meeting your own needs or getting your needs met and met in healthy ways, um, how, how are you going to teach your children? to do the same thing. How are you going to meet their needs? If a thousand percent, right. 
Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, I see the thread too of, you know, the, the quick fix and mm-hmm. what's wrong with me so I can just do it right or be right. And, mm-hmm. you know, kind of Western medicine of here's a bunch of pills to fix the problem because for a lot of people, and this is not a judgment in any way, this is like, again, the like water that we're swimming in mm-hmm. it, it that's the easier way. And that's a lot of what we've been presented is quote, the right way too. Um, whereas ultimately kind of like down, down the road, that's not necessarily it, right? Like mm-hmm. working with a coach and leaning into what's good about you, which is by the way, all of it. Um, yes. and what feels good for you and you know, what supports you? Like that's some uncomfortable stuff. I joke with my coach every single week, like, you know, going through this process and working with a coach is annoying and uncomfortable yeah. <laughs> because yeah. it's not, you know, it's not something that we've necessarily like been exposed to as much and in yeah. the same way. And, uh, you know, that's a part of my coaching journey professionally is what I've been going through personally as a mom. Um, because for me, and if there are books, somebody throw them my way, come into my DMs and, and tell me, <laughs> um, you know, the books that really, truly help you as a parent, you know, figure out yeah. what those pieces are for you, what feels good for you, how you take care of you. Because, uh, you know, I'm, I am no expert, um, but I can tell you, I've done a lot of things that I wish I hadn't done with my kids. Um, you know, because I, because my needs weren't being met, right. Because I wasn't taking mm-hmm. care of myself. And it's kind of this evolution for me as I've become a coach and, you know, learn to really lean into strengths and, you know, put these pieces together for myself as, as how looking at the whole person and, um, taking care of them on that foundational level is so important because I've been in the other, you know, on the other way, <laughs> um, yeah. as a parent too. Um, yeah. so it's, yeah, it's a process and I, you know, it, it means that we also have to be uncomfortable and we have to be okay to get it wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it's just like a really beautiful journey. I think that when we're able to go on that journey, at any phase of being a parent, um, then it makes it easier to support our kids in doing that too. Yeah. The, the deeper that we dive into discomfort, like the, it's like the better life gets, like you're going to, it's just like a workout. Like you're going to go be uncomfortable. You're going to get hot and sweaty and tired and whatever. But then afterwards you're going to feel amazing. And the Mm -hmm. same is true in parenting. Like, you've got to have the uncomfortable conversation. You've got to stay calm when they're throwing a tantrum Mm -hmm. instead of unleashing your discomfort in the form of yelling or punishment or um, exclusion. And like, that's uncomfortable and getting coached is uncomfortable. Like you said, like Mm -hmm. I always warn people, I'm like, you're not going to always like me. Like you like me right now, like while you hire me and I'm a fun person. (laughs) A fun person to talk to, yes, yeah. but I'm also here to challenge you. Like that's my job. Yes. I'm not going to do it in a rude way and I'm not going to do it in a judgmental way. And I'm never going to shame you for anything that you do because parenting, right. I parenting to, is the most difficult thing that I have ever done in my life. Taking care of children is, it is a smack in the face of every flaw you've ever had or knew about inside of yourself. Yes. And yes. it and it is hard to look in that mirror, um, but that's part of that's part of it. That's part of the journey, and it's healing if you let it be healing. Yes, yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah, and I didn't read that in a parenting book. <laughs> you know, like I need a chapter on that and what to expect, but it's right? not there. <laughs> right, what to expect yeah. when you're yeah. expecting? Like, let's talk about yeah. years one through five, or I guess what yes. is it? What to expect after? Is there, is that, have they made a version that it's like what to expect after you've given birth? Like, yeah. And they should, well, they have some, it's like what to expect the first year and, you know, Mm. some things like that. But again, for me, there's, I have not found one. Um, Maybe, maybe I can write it. You know, the book that's like, Hey, there's so many books out there about babies and how to take care of them. And here's how to take care of yourself. And I mean, to be honest with you too, parenting didn't get hard for me. Trust me, parenting is hard the whole time and every phase has its own thing. Mm -hmm. It was easy for me to parent a baby Mm -hmm. in many ways compared to what it's like to parent my six-year-old now. 
you know, yeah. because the, she is stepping into her own mm -hmm. and she is, you know, having tantrums and big emotions. And she didn't have those things when she was one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it just, it just wasn't the same. And there's, you know, so many more transitions and school and friends and, you know, like all of these things that it really, it's compounded for me, the need for this well-being piece as a foundation for me as a parent, mm. um, not only having, you know, multiple babies, but as, as those babies are getting older, um, because like you just said, it's like, it can be a smack in the face of, you know, your own triggers. And yeah. if you have, when you have, um, when you can grasp onto those pieces of that well-being and that foundation, be able to stay calm for them to support them through what they're going through. Yeah. Whew, that feels like really, really powerful. Yeah. And when you, when you have multiple children, um, you're not always, you get to be, so the parent that you were when your six-year-old was born is different than the parent you are now for your youngest. How old is your youngest? Yes, absolutely. Yes. You're, you're so right. The parent that I was six years ago is absolutely a different version uh, in many ways, layers and forms. My youngest is 16 months now. That's right. And you know, what I've learned about myself in the process, I know that I'm a different parent to him. I know for all three of them, I am more patient and more calm. And that's not to say that I am perfect <laughs> yeah. by any means. Yeah, It just means for me, you know, the grace I can bring into the situation for myself, like recognizing and knowing as I've evolved, they've evolved and there mm. was nothing wrong with the way that I was parenting my daughter before. It's just that now I've learned, you know, something different. And so yeah. the, the grace and the self-love and like compassion that comes into that for me that I've had to work really hard on, by the way, with my therapist and my mm -hmm. coach, <laughs> um, you know, is not shaming who I was instead, yeah. you know, celebrating who I was, what I was doing and being able to bring, you know, those pieces that feel really good still to me from, from her, um, into me right now. Mm. I love that. I love, especially cause do, doing the work is hard. Doing the work is, you know, looking at the ugly pieces, um, the not so perfect pieces and integrating that in the moment is hard. But what about five years later, 10 years later, when you look back, yes. like I still look back at 21, 22, 25 year old Jenny. And I'm like, ew, <laughs> I still, <laughs> I still judge it. I still, and I still, and I, and that's like, it's a constant practice. Um, mm -hmm. And I, there's actually a really cool meditation um, that I will link in the show notes. Um, but it's, it was on Oprah in like the nineties, apparently. Um, and you, the visual is that you go to your childhood home, the first home you ever lived in. And you as an adult go back and visit the child you were in that home. Um, and which is generally somewhere between zero and five years old. And it was, I mean, I just cried and I just hugged that little girl and it gave me empathy for 20 year old Jenny. It gave me empathy yeah. and grace and love and understanding because I was still just a kid. I was still just a dumbass, you know, <laughs> trying to figure it out. And I was doing my best. I was always doing my best at no point in my life. Do I ever have a memory where I wasn't, striving and struggling Absolutely. and doing mm -hmm. what I thought was the right thing. And yeah. that's, that's true for parents. Most yeah, parents are trying their best and doing what they know, according to their life experience to be what's best for their kids. Absolutely. Yeah. And that can get uncomfortable too, when you do learn, you know, something different or new, yeah. right. Or yeah. can be for me, um, you know, can ruffle my parents' feathers, right. Of like, that's not mm -hmm. how we raised you. And it's like, I know that. And yeah. this is the choice that, you know, I'm making, right. Yeah. Um, this is what feels right for me. And 
early on, I'll be honest, you know, becoming a parent, there were pieces of me that judged my parents. And yeah. again, as a part of this coaching journey for me, my own well being, stepping into parenthood in all of the ways is like, wow actually like as I've been able to give myself grace in the process, I can also look and give them more grace and recognize and realize yeah. that they were also just doing the best that they could. Right. Yeah. And something else you said resonated with me in terms of, you know, looking, looking at Jenny as a 22 year old and thinking that she's a dumbass, <laughs> like we all do. Right. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and like we were all there in some way, shape or form. We, I think I can, I can say, um, yeah. and so community, is a really big piece of my framework in working with mm. my clients too, because that, you know, stepping outside of the, um, your silo, right? Like your single family yeah. home, your apartment, wherever you're living, it can yes. feel really isolating sometimes when you are having those struggles, whether it be taking care of you, blowing up at your kids, whatever it is. And the second that we have the vulnerability to say, this happened to me, there's eight other people that can also be there to yeah. say, me too. You know, yes. like it's so easy to get into these kind of pockets of shame. I think that, that there is something wrong or we're bad or same, you know, with our kids, there's something wrong with them. They're bad. But when we have the, the vulnerability, <laughs> um, and compassion for ourselves to say like, Hey, I'm going through this thing. Somebody else has also gone through it, you know, yeah. and that, that power of normalizing and not feeling so isolating, I think is a really beautiful olive branch that we can also give ourselves in the, in all of this too, which then again, allows us to give that to our child. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I think that's, that's a pillar that we share, um, is trying to create yeah. community, um, mm -hmm. trying to create the village that everybody talks about it, taking to raise a child. It's like, yeah. what village? Yeah. Where's that freaking village? <laughs> can, like you can have somebody one... build it? Right? Like there yeah. is no village anymore. We all live in our own silo. Like you said, we live in our own one to five bedroom households in what, you know, in little communities and nobody talks to each other. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I've been shocked. I live in an amazing neighborhood and it's a small town. And I just, I got here thinking, oh, everybody's going to know each other. I'm going to be talking to all the neighbors. And I, and now that I've been here for a little over a year, I know some of my neighbors really well and we talk and help each other out and all the things, but there is a shocking number of people in my cul-de-sac alone that I have never seen, never talked to and who don't know each other at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and we live literally like we can see into each other's windows. Right. Like, mm -hmm. so yeah. So building community, community is a serious issue in the way that our society has been set up. And, um, it's also one of the biggest causes of, uh, the shame cycle that we all mm -hmm. get stuck in because yeah. we don't have anyone to like that we're just constantly seeing everyone's struggling. We don't, no one sees it. We, we just see each other's good sides mm -hmm. and, um, shoot. I just lost the, uh, the other thing community. Nobody talks to each other anymore. Oh no, it flew away. Connection. Like we need, we need connection as human beings. Yeah. We, um, it's the number one, it is the number one determining factor of life satisfaction mm -hmm. is the quality of your relationships. Yep. And if you are not talking face to face with people regularly, daily, constant interactions, like living like a, like kind of tribally, whether that's at your workplace or whatever, especially yeah. like new moms not getting out of the house because it's fucking hard to get out of the house. And who are you going to go see? Where are you going to like, where are you going to go? Um, yeah. but mental health, that's the, the thought that flew away. Our mental health plummeted when people, people quit. And especially with the internet, nobody leaves their houses anymore. Nobody goes. Yeah. Well, and you know, coming, through the pandemic too, yeah. right? Oh, it's like, just gotten worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, unfortunately, I think, although we know the importance of it, because that was our reality for so long, it's actually 
harder to come mm-hmm. out of some of those bubbles that we had created um, because, you know, commuting and, you know, being out in, in the office and going to all of those pieces and work functions, like all of that went away. And, um, you know, the fitness studio that I was working at before, like trying to get their attendance back to where it was before mm, yeah. COVID was and is a struggle for a lot of businesses because it's just a different life that we're living and at the same time, it doesn't mean that the importance of that piece has gone away in yeah. any way. Yeah. I'm like, I'm. this is something I'm actively working with right now um, because I'm trying to start hosting in-person classes at yeah. our local YMCA. And I've known for a long time that was going to be really hard to get parents mm-hmm. to come to because of childcare. Um, it's hard to get people to leave their houses anyway. Um, but you know, parents need childcare if they're going to, if both parents are going to be able to show up for a class like that together, Mm -hmm. which is the goal. I'm, I call it relational parenting. Like you're the parents are the primary relationship in the household. You both need to be coming and learning these things. Um, and on the same page and, So anyway, so I'm doing it with the YMCA because there's kid care and I can, you know, it's included. So there's, you don't have to pay for childcare. You don't have to hire a babysitter. You don't have to do the whole text role, you know, all the hiring, whatever, trying to see who's available for, you know, an hour. Um, It's also hard to get a babysitter to come by for an hour. It's like, that's a waste of my time. That's, you know, um, right. Anyway. But that's like, I am, I am so dead set. Um, and I refuse (laughs) to make everything that I offer online, at least, at least to start, because my goal is to create in-person community, in-person connections is to create a village of people who are close enough to go to this YMCA and take a class, which means they're close enough that you can form like a parent cohort where you take turns watching each other's kids. So like these two families drop their kids off with these two families on this Saturday night and they get to go have a date night. And then the next weekend, these two families drop their kids off and they get to go have their date night, you know, and nobody pays each other. You just swap childcare. Mm -hmm. Um, and you save money, you create bonds and friendships and people you can rely on if something awful were to happen or, you know, someone needs surgery and can't cook or like all the things, like how we used to just take care of each other. Yeah. Yeah. We desperately need to bring more of that back. I love that you're doing that. Yeah. Yeah. It's the first time I've ever, I've talked about it out loud. Um, (laughs) Yay. (laughs) (laughs) But I, but yeah, well, community and village is just so, it's just so like at the top of mind for me. Mm-hmm. Um, it's literally what I like, it's all I'm focused on right now is creating that yeah. space. But I want to get back to some of your, some of the things that you and I have talked about because there's, um, that's what came up for me earlier the re- reparenting of the self, um, the relationship to self. And how that influences, I mean, everything in your life, but your relationship to your spouse, your relationship to your children, um, your relationship to your friends, to your family. Um, what are some of the, what are some of the like really key pieces that you see coming up, um, with the people that you coach regularly? What are the things that you're seeing that like most people can identify with? Yeah. So much of what I see in my clients, they tend to be, you know, high achieving, people pleasing perfectionists, um, mm. which hi. Right. <laughs> hi. Here uh, we are. <laughs> nice to meet you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, with, with that, right. It means that we're really hard on ourselves And when we're really hard on ourselves, it means that we're also really hard on everyone else around us in different ways. Um, It just, it can show up and that is how it shows up. You know, we have really high expectations for ourselves. And so then we want those things in, in our world. Mm -hmm. And 
the the reparenting piece what i've seen that important puzzle piece that i wasn't given that i've had to like draw mm-hmm. and color in myself <laughs> you know um, yes yeah exactly yes. is compassion and mm-hmm. it's that's kind of the the cornerstone even if it's a a flicker for just a moment yeah it makes the rest of it possible um because otherwise the the shame the guilt the judgment of whatever it is being too much not being enough um you know losing your cool with your kids like if you can't repair that with yourself and understand that you were doing the best that you could in that moment in that situation then it's really hard to to apply that anywhere else and so when mm-hmm. we can do that and bring that in the reparenting can can begin in really small steps um that again personally for me have made it possible to to know to feel that i am showing up differently with my kids yeah um i yeah i would say in different ways and and phases that's kind of the the theme that i see in in my clients and working with them that's a big one and i think i think that the high, the high achieving perfectionism, people pleaser comes from a parenting generation that used high standards and shame. And there's nothing wrong with high standards. There's nothing wrong with setting a high bar and helping your children reach for it, um, or reach it Mm -hmm. or exceed it. Um, and the tool for doing that, that won't, cause long-term mental health problems and this toxic pushing of ourselves Mm -hmm. and molding of ourselves to become whatever the world needs us to be instead of being what we already are. Um, that tool is connection, not shame. Yes. Yes. If you like, go ahead. Yeah. I I was, I want to add the, I see the the well-being foundation and mm-hmm. that compassion piece making it possible. I'm going to off the top of my head butcher this quote, but I think it was Viktor Frankl who talked about how in between the stimulus and the response, you know, there's that room yes. for the pause, right? Yeah. And if we if we don't have that foundation of self-compassion and, and wellness, then it's really hard, excuse me, really easy to just react. And again, no judgment, no shame, nothing wrong with that at all. It's how we were raised and we're here. (laughs) Um, when we allow for that love in all of the ways, there is that space for pause, which is another piece of coaching that's really powerful is curiosity, right? Mm -hmm. As opposed to yelling at our child to say, what were you thinking? Mm -hmm. You can pause and say, Hey, I just noticed this thing happened. You know, what's coming up for you, (laughs) which, you know, I think I can talk to my three-year-old that way. I don't necessarily, but that does work right now for my six-year-old. Um, I'm, I'm trying to remember there was a situation really recently, but it's not coming to me right now where I, I, in my brain, I jumped and assumed one thing, but I physically was very proud of myself for being able to give the pause and ask the curious question. And she just misunderstood you know, Mm -hmm. we misunderstood each other. And because I was able to do that, it allowed a really beautiful conversation between us, Mm -hmm. um, that I just, you know, we were able to talk to each other and she could ask more questions. And I just walked away from the situation being like, like, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And compassion. I think you started to draw this line um, and I just want to connect the dots. The, I said that the tool is connection and you said that the tool is, is compassion. And if you don't cultivate compassion inside of yourself for yourself, 
compassion and grace to be human, to make mistakes, to be imperfect, to be who you are and meet your own needs, then connecting with your child through compassion, grace, love, humility, yes. pause, all of those things is not, you're not gonna be able to do that. So your relationship right. to yourself, and I know we've already said this 800 times, relationship to yourself, relationship to your child. Yeah. Like you've got to connect, have compassion for, dig deep, uncover, bring out that intuition so that, because intuition doesn't yell, intuition doesn't scream, mm -hmm. intuition doesn't push, intuition isn't hard. Intuition mm -hmm. is soft, slow. Gentle. Mm -hmm. gentle it is gentle which we yeah. need to get to the word that word gentle um it is gentle and but it's also firm mm -hmm. it's also confident consistent like intu consistent the yeah. intuition intuition's decision doesn't change from situation to situation it doesn't mm -hmm. go oh well this I have this boundary, you know, but tomorrow that boundary might change. No, like yep. intuition is like, this is a boundary for me and I'm going to hold that boundary with my child and I'm going to be loving about it, but I'm also going to be firm. I'm going to yep. be immovable. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uncovering and digging down into that intuition for yourself and, and leading with the intuition um, cause that's something else. That's something else that I always try to say too, is that, you know, I'm not here and you're not here like coaches. It's like coaching is like, you do, you're like telling people what to do or right. telling them they're wrong. They're doing it the wrong way and took over here and do it the right way. Um, mm -hmm. and I feel like coaching, we need to redefine the word coach or maybe quit using it, use a different word, but I don't know what, a, you know, consultant, um, teammate, <laughs> like, partner. I, yeah, partner. yeah, I am yeah. here to be a parenting partner. I'm here mm -hmm. to come in and learn your values and learn, um, what your strengths are, what you're good mm -hmm. at and what you want, you know, to do and what your goals are. And then I'm going to help you step into the person who does those things by yes. asking the right questions. And I am, I'm going to teach you some child development research. I'm going to teach you yep. some best practices. Um, but I'm, they're like every child there, there are, I don't know how many, you know, 4 billion kids on the planet. I don't know what the division is between kids and adults. Um, but, and every single one of them is different and yeah. there's not going to be one tactic that works for every single child in every single situation. Mm -hmm. And so your intuition as a parent, like you were given this child for a reason, you yeah. have the skills and gifts necessary to raise this child. Yes. And we all have layers of childhood trauma and life experiences that we are filtering our parenting through that are, that yeah. are toxic and not serving yeah. our child. Yeah. And that's actually another pillar of how I work with my clients. And like you're saying, it's not telling them what to do. It's, it's tools and then adapting mm -hmm. them, you know, to, to how it works for them. Because in our more masculine dominated society, you know, a lot of us women in particular, or if you're, you know, cultured that way, um, the people pleasing piece is real. And what it does yeah. after years and years and years of people pleasing is that you get really good at pushing down whatever it is that you want and desire. Yep. Right. Yep. Because it's how you can show up for everyone else and what they need. And so your needs, you get really good at ignoring them. Mm -hmm. And so tapping into your feminine power and reconnecting to that is what I, how I talk about it is like, trusting your gut and your intuition, honoring, mm -hmm. you know, your body and your cycles, which allow those pieces to, to fall into place and to start paying attention to those, you know, little whispers of like, okay, I know that this is what I should say to my kid in this situation, but 
this is actually what feels really good to me right now. Yeah. Um, is really, really neat. You know, when somebody can feel comfortable and confident in that, I have a lot of clients that I've worked with, you know, as we're completing, um, you know, I just ask questions about their experience to get feedback and help them reflect, you know, on how they've shifted and grown. And more than one, like I would say half of them, at least at some point in the conversation, always end up saying like, you know, I was really annoyed at first when we started working together because mm-hmm. I just wanted you to tell me what to do. Mm-hmm. And instead you asked questions, you know, and it wasn't about telling me what to do. It was asking me what I wanted to do. And actually that's been, you know, the more powerful part of this journey for me is realizing that I actually had the answers all along and you gave me the permission to, to trust myself and to listen to that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's like a, it's like a, yeah, a granting of permission. It's like you, you are a mirror for her to mm-hmm. look into and the mirror yeah. reflected the right questions so that she could see herself yeah. fully and be like, Oh, yeah. actually I want to do this. And, mm-hmm. and it also comes with like proof over time, you know, of like following your intuition and then, mm-hmm. and then the result is wonderful. And you're like, uh, Oh, like yeah. <laughs> the, and sometimes intuition, it is a wisp and it almost always is a whisper. Um, Mm -hmm. intuition is a whisper. And so you have to really stop and listen. Um, but it's also often if you, people often wait to rationalize intuition in their mind. Mm -hmm. Why do Mm -hmm. I feel this? Why do I want this? Why do I think this is the next step or the next thing? Um, instead of just Mm -hmm. doing it and trusting Mm -hmm. it. And when you, you know, sometimes you can, you can, go, Oh, I have this feeling. Why do I have this feeling? And you can work through it and then do it. But a lot of times Mm -hmm. you, you get lost in the analyzing of your intuition instead Mm -hmm. of just trusting it. And then it's like a year later and you still haven't executed (laughs) based on your gut feeling. Yeah. Yeah. Because like you're saying, it's also really easy to jump to the analyzing piece. So it's like, well, here's where I am. That's what I want. But how do I ever even get there? And what's the first step and forget about it. Like it doesn't even, you know, it doesn't matter because it's just not possible. Um, that's where a coach could come in, but (laughs) right. Yeah. (laughs) Hello. (laughs) Yeah. Right. It's just one big commercial. Yeah. No, (laughs) there was something else that I just thought about when you were saying that piece and it flew away. You said that earlier and that's just what happened to me. It'll come back. Okay. Yeah. Um, gentle, the word gentle. Yeah. So uh, the, the words we've talked on the podcast about gentle parenting. Um, and I've talked to so many people and I'm like, you know, I always start off by being like, you've probably heard of gentle parenting. That's like, the Mm -hmm. big term right now and it's well-intentioned and the philosophies are aligned and wonderful. And I, and I know, and pretty much, and I literally haven't talked to a single person who identifies with that word and the word parenting because Mm -hmm. parenting is rarely gentle outside of the like baby snuggles and like gentle touches and you know there's moments there are gentle moments but parenting itself is like a tornado yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) or a hurricane like maybe there's like these moments in the middle in the eye of the storm yeah (laughs) you know yeah parenting like kids kids will knock you off your feet. They will unground you. They will like, I spent three hours this morning with a three-year-old and I haven't, I haven't, um, been actively working with kids 
for like a little while now. Cause I've been on the coaching journey. Yeah. Um, but I still like once a month, once every couple of months, I return and do a babysitting gig or I take kids for a weekend, you know, nieces and nephews, et cetera. Um, and I, and I, it's like, I, I, get another taste and a reminder of like, Oh my <laughs> God, this is so hard. This is so hard. Even for yeah. someone who is teaching these things to like stay grounded, to use the tools to, um, to, to be present and calm and gentle. And also life requires firm and harsh and yeah. big and strong and, mm -hmm. Because to weather a storm, like, you cannot be gentle back to the storm. The storm will no. eat you alive. And that yes. doesn't mean, not gentle doesn't mean mean, shaming, disrespectful, mm -hmm. hurtful. You know, it doesn't mean any of those things. The opposite of gentle is firm. Yeah. The opposite of gentle or the, you know, the compliment to gentle um, is confident, mm -hmm. you know, and kids yeah. need that too. Kids need structure and boundaries and a confident leader. Like you would not go into the army or a classroom or whatever. Like if you had a strong teacher at the front of the classroom who called you on your bullshit you did not fuck with that teacher and you trusted yeah. that teacher or that coach, you know, if you were in football or volleyball or whatever, like you trust strong leaders, mm -hmm. your kid needs a strong leader, but you also loved the coaches and the teachers and whoever else in your life, the leaders in your life who were compassionate and kind to you. Yeah. Right. That's what I love about your brand is the first word that's coming to me, but your, I guess, approach, right. Is yeah. because you're right. I, I, I don't identify with that word, gentle parenting, that phrase. Um, because when I first heard about it and started learning about it in the moments where I was being more firm or when I couldn't keep my cool anymore, they're allowed a layer of shame and judgment, mm. you know, on myself because I, I, I didn't do this thing. I wasn't gentle. Right. Yeah. And the relational parenting on the other hand, I just love so much because it says to me, it or speaks to the power of the relationship that we, all of the different layers and kinds and types of relationships and yes. what can happen in them and how they can be really strong. And it is love and compassion and it's not shame and it is boundaries and, you know, it, it is being firm and it is being gentle and, you know, it's allowing this and this gray as opposed to the either or the black and white right or wrong in parenting yeah. that really can encompass all of the highs and lows of being yes. a parent and taking care of yourself and taking care of your kids. Yeah. yeah. I always, um, thank you. First of all, <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I, I told you that before, but I'll say it now that, yeah. it's, that it's official. <laughs> but that's, I mean, you hit yeah. the nail on the head of why I named it that because yeah, we learn, we connect through relationships. We have quality of life through relationships mm -hmm. and we learn through yeah. relationships. Um, mm -hmm. And I always ask parents who are coupled, who are partnered, um, you know, inside of your partnership, like what works yeah. screaming and yelling and criticizing, shaming your partner. That doesn't work. Mm -mm. That never works. Mm -mm. Then you just fight all the time and you right. and distance, you disconnect from each other. Yeah. It builds like, a thicker, bigger wedge. Yeah. Like what works inside of your partnership mm -hmm. now translate that into a parent child. There has to be mutual respect. There has to be, you have to listen mm -hmm. to their experience and validate it. And then, you know, they're going to learn how to listen to your experience too. Um, mm -hmm. But you have to do it first. You're the parent. They're not yeah. going to do it. They're not going to respect you until they've learned respect from you. From you. Yes, totally. And, you know, taking what you would do with another adult in the room and treating your child with the same 
dignity and respect, you know, in the language of a child, of course, it's not going to be exactly the same. Right. Yeah. But translate it. That, that the birdie came back to me. You said something (laughs) earlier about the, the mirror, right? Like holding the mirror up. And I know as a parent and I assume this, um, for all parents, nurturers, caregivers, whoever it is that we love, that we are taking care of, we want the best for them, right? We we see them as whole and creative and resourceful and fun and loving and compassionate. And we want all of the things for them. We want them Mm -hmm. to take care of each other, to take care of themselves. And we want them to, you know, reach their dreams and live a life that makes them happy. (laughs) And we also have an opportunity, which I didn't really understand for a long time Mm -hmm. to model that first, just like you're saying, the respect piece has to be modeled from the parent first. Mm -hmm. It's the, it's the well being and the compassion and seeing ourselves as whole that makes it so much easier to do that and gift that to everybody else to our kids. Yeah. And that something just popped up for me while you were saying that is there's a lot of, um, being a parent requires you to not need anything from, from your children. Mm -hmm. If you are relying on your children to meet your needs you will respect me. You will apologize to me. You will mm-hmm. not speak to me that way. You will like in demanding um, these things of your children, you know, at a certain age when they're 17, sure. Don't talk to me like that, <laughs> you know, calling them out on things, but making these demands of our children simply because we don't like their behavior and their behavior is their language mm-hmm. Yeah. and is how they get their needs met. We take it all personally. When we are compassionate with ourselves, when we can accept ourselves, our past, our current selves, um, have compassion for and choose to connect and, and get our, you know, learn how to meet our needs or how to get our needs met yeah. by our spouse or our friends or our family, um, then we quit relying on our children Yes, and requiring them to meet a need for mm-hmm. us to be respected, to be calm, to have appropriate behaviors in public because you're embarrassing me. Like mm-hmm. quit taking your child's behavior personally because it's not about you. Yes. They don't yeah. know any better. Exactly. Whatever they do, like you said, in public, if they have a tantrum, it's not a reflection of you as a parent. Yeah. Which is, which is hard because people are so judgmental of parents in public. They are so mean. Mm. And I do think that's changing and shifting slowly. um, As we realize and accept children for being imperfect humans, just like we are. (laughs) How dare you you leave the house with a (laughs) three-year-old? He might scream. (laughs) Like, yeah. Yeah. Like where and how exactly this idea that, I mean, very simply kids should be seen and not heard is like very mind blowing to me. Um, so I feel as somebody who's experienced and had kids, you know, who have had outbursts, um, you know, I feel this shift, um, But it's, yeah, I just thought of this experience that I had um, when I was flying with my oldest. She was five weeks old. So I'm a Mm. new mom, first flight, like so scared I'm going to be that mom on the plane, right? (laughs) Whose baby cries the whole time. Yeah. And I got onto the plane and this woman stopped me and said, how old is it? (gasps) And I said, "Uh, she's five weeks. That's what I thought it's going to cry the whole time. And I was like, okay. Like Jesus, the gall on some people. I know. And so I kept walking and I'm like sitting in my chair and I'm, you know, panicking. She was sleeping by the way. Like she wasn't even, you know, crying then, but I'm having these moments. And I remembered a friend of mine said like, you know, your baby can feel you and your energy and your vibration. When you can stay calm, she will. 
No kidding, Jenny. She slept the whole time. It was totally fine. And I just recently um, did this little interview for an article of like how to help someone or, you know, help parents who are traveling with kids. And my first thought was like, bring compassion into the situation. Like ask them if they need help, if they need you to hold a baby so they can go pee. Like, (laughs) you know, this, um, this community piece, this compassion that we've been talking about this whole time. For me, I just see when we can start with ourselves, when we can give it to our children, then we can also start bringing that into our community in our world, yeah. you know, but yes. it starts with us and it starts with how we're parenting our kids and the ways that we can be gentle, but firm, you know, hold all of these things and love ourselves in all of these different ways and pieces. Like it just makes it so much easier to keep going out and doing that for somebody else. And every time I tell that story, I think of that woman and I send her love because something was going oh, on that day, me. you know, it, it wasn't about me. Right. <laughs> yeah. You know? It wasn't, it wasn't, I'm over it wasn't here about like, me. you know, just like I would Mike punch having her. a tantrum. No. Is, I know. <laughs> Mike and having a tantrum is not a reflection of me. The way she reacted to me, not a reflection, you know, it's like, yeah. and so when she we can was also having have a bad day and she was having yeah. a bad day. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, she had a bad experience. I don't know. Maybe she sat next to a crying baby, but like, you know, the week before, I don't know, it sucks, but like also, you know, babies are going to cry. So (laughs) it's going to be a thing. Well, Um, babies are part of society. Like children are part of society and they're not Mm -hmm. like we aren't leashing and muzzling our, our children. That's right. It's just all of the things because you and I, if we do that, when we talk do that, for four yeah, hours. I could talk about this forever. <laughs> yeah. When, if we did like leash, right. If we did muzzle, this is like so extreme, but like when and where do we expect them to be themselves and take up their own space yeah. and take care of themselves? You know, like it has to start somewhere. So the sooner yeah. that we can be celebrating somebody for who they are, whenever that happens in their life, like that to mm. me is a really beautiful, delicious opportunity. I love that phrase, celebrating, not just Mm -hmm. putting up with, celebrating who that child is and that they Mm -hmm. are expressing themselves instead of holding it in and exploding later in life. Like, yeah, so many things I want to say, but we should wrap up. (laughs) (laughs) Um. Yeah, but celebrating, not just putting up with or even just accepting who someone is, but celebrating. Yeah. Deeply knowing someone and loving their expression of themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I probably said this 50 times already, but when we can do that for ourselves, it makes it a lot easier to do it for our kids. You know, you, you said earlier, no child is the same. Right. And that's Mm -hmm. something else I didn't really understand. I thought that it was going to like, you know, once I had it figured out for the first one, like I just had to do it again for the second one. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And like, that's not true. (laughs) That's not how it's gone. Right. So it's, it's allowed that celebration piece for me has allowed this unfolding and this, you know, evolution to look at each of my kids and celebrate each of them as they're like stepping into, you know, more of who they are because it's been so fun to, and it is right? fun and it's going to be fun to see how exciting. and you know, watch them blossom in their own way. Exactly. Yeah. Like how exciting yeah, and I'm doing you get it to too. watch. I'm doing it with them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you as I'm watch. learning to take up my own space. Yes. yes. And celebrate me and be, be too much and like, you know, do all of the things and follow what I want to do. Some of my family thinks I'm totally nuts because I'm a coach, <laughs> but I love it's it. where, it's where I feel alive. Yeah. yeah. So as I get to do that, I get to also like give them that permission too. It's been so cool. I love that. Yeah. That's perfect. That's a perfect ending spot. I love it. Yeah. Um, is there any, is there anything that we did not touch on that you want to share with parents? This has been a really fun conversation and evolution of 
the pieces, you know, the pillars of my program and the awesome places that our programs overlap. And I just love connecting with you. So it's been, it's been really fun. So thank you so much. Yeah. Where, um, I'll put all your stuff in the show notes, but let everybody know where they can find you. Yeah. My website is coachingwithcaitlin.com and my Instagram is at underscore with Caitlin. It's the Irish way. C-A-I-T-L-I-N. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People always ask me that and then clarify if it's the Irish way, which is really funny. Um, and that's where I hang out the most. I've got some freebies on my website. You can get on my email list. Um, I send a weekly email to my list and love connecting with people that way. And I, you know, I try to be on TikTok and some of the other things, but Instagram's my jam. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the millennial That's jam. Find me. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. So I just launched a new group coaching program for nurturers. It's called Radiance. And uh, many pieces, um, you know, it's kind of what we talked about today, but we get to celebrate and focus on the pillars of feminine power, wellness, and community to help you reclaim your radiance. So it's Mm -hmm. a virtual group coaching program to bring together nurturers to nurture and support each other while we're on this, this journey together. So that is coachingwithcaitlin.com slash radiance where you can get more information there and join us if you're interested we start the week of july 10th so right after um this bad boy will drop yeah well that worked out perfectly (laughs) yeah i'm just realizing now so thanks that's where we go awesome well thank you so much for being here i know that it took us a couple of reschedules because life (sighs) man Life. life. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's been so fun to connect with you and thank you for your flexibility, but we did it and it was yes, lovely. We can't did wait it. to connect again. Yeah. And you're here in Colorado. So we are, can actually like be real friends in like person. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, so nice. it's so exciting. Yeah. Um, yeah. So thank you everyone for being here. We, the Patreon is open. If you are here to support the mission, um, support parents, you can go in and there's three different giving levels in the Patreon, uh, link in all of the show notes. We will link Caitlin, um, all of her links, all of the references. I think we have, I have three different things we talked about in here that I'm going to link um, including this Oprah meditation of, uh, yeah, I want, that sounds really beautiful. I want to do that. I've not heard of that. I'm going to link, I'm going to link that it's, it was so amazing. Uh, and let's see what else next week will be a just me and dad episode and happy 4th of July. Cause this will be coming out on the 6th. So Happy awesome. belated cool. 4th of July to everybody. <laughs> I'm always like, you know, we're always recording at a different time than it's releasing. So I always have to like think forward and fig- like be like, what are, what's all the, yeah. what's happening in the future? I have to talk to it right now. <laughs> so yeah. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you so much, Caitlin. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye everybody. Well, did you learn anything new? Or have you heard all of this before? Do you agree with us, disagree with us, have a question? We want to see you in our inbox or via the Patreon page in the show notes. Tap on either link to send us your feedback, share your own parenting story, or support our mission of providing a connected community for all parents. And don't forget to hit subscribe so you never miss an episode. If you loved this episode, click on that little star and give us five of them so we can get visible to other parents who are looking for us. This is your weekly reminder. Parents, you already have everything you need inside of you. You are a strong, loving, capable parent. And here, you are never alone. I'll see you next week.